must begin, must begin with an apology. I'm sorry, YouTube. Who likes to get bad information on the internet? I know that I do not, and so I must apologize up front. Yesterday, I told you that the Beacon was a 9mm drop and that the Clifton 5 was an 11 Totally wrong. Uh, I hate to throw them under the bus, but I got my information from Runner's World. Sorry, Runner's World. Like, usually, I feel like they're a pretty good resource. I, I enjoy their website and, like, the articles that they have, but that's a pretty big... So, the real drop is 6 millimeters for the Beacon, 5 millimeters from for the Hoka Clifton 5. So, I just want to be up front, and I apologize for the bad information. Please forgive me, please forgive me, please forgive me. All right, we're gonna talk about the foot log here in a minute, give you an update on my plantar fasciitis, and something interesting happened uh, a couple days ago at Goodwill. Stay tuned, stay tuned. First, we gotta go under the house. It's time to decorate for a little Christmas time, little Christmas time, all right, come on. Wow. Here we go, going under the house with an astronaut. All right, going to get the Christmas stuff, right, Joseph? All right, what Robert, then I did it. Then we'll go to all the decorations. Yeah, then we're gonna get all the decorations. Then we're gonna go to Venus, right? Right. But to first, get the Christmas tree. to get the Christmas tree, we're gonna go to Venus. But first, and then we, we are the way in. And then we're gonna decorate. But first, we gotta go to the house. Come on, YouTube. Come on, come on. Come down. Yeah, Seth. You Just, uh, just a little bit of weight training, YouTube. Just a little bit of weight training. Whew. Oh, boy. Got the foot log. All right, we are back up from under the house. Definitely don't have to go to the gym today after lifting all that stuff up. Holy smokes. That was, that's a workout. That's a workout. All right, guys. The foot log. Uh, talked about this 10 days ago on the vlog. Yes, it is available down below. Love this thing for my plantar fasciitis. And a lot of you have commented saying you are suffering from PF as well. I'm sorry. Just so you know, mine is getting better quite a bit better. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. And it's, I think, in part because of this foot log and what I'm doing with massaging with this thing. I love the knobs. See those little little knobs there on this guy? It feels so good on the foot and on the arch. And I'm trying to stay away from the heel, heeding your advice, YouTube. So working really on the arch area. But craziness. What are the chances after acquiring this foot log, you know, two weeks ago, what are the chances that the next week, out of all the Goodwills in all the land, that there's another foot log at the Goodwill down the street from our house? Like, what are the, So now I have two foot logs. I don't even know what to do with myself. I think it's a sign. It's got to be a sign that I am on the right track with trying to get over the plantar fasciitis. But come on, guys. What are the chances? All right. Time to get up a little Christmas tree. Did I, I, I think I failed to mention, I failed to mention that we have sanitized the foot log. Don't worry, it's clean, it's clean now. Yeah. Oh man, the signposts of life. I just, this is the, we've lived in this house for seven years and it's the first time we've ever put Christmas lights on the outside of the house. And I just, I'm just looking at it like as a victory, like out of, after seven years, we're finally getting on our, on our A game. We're getting on the ball and getting things done before, you know, Christmas even like, I just remember in the past just being like, there's no way I have an hour of time to go put Christmas lights on the outside of the house. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll catch it next year. We'll catch it next year. Well, now is next year. And so anyway, it just feels good. I'm sure you guys can relate to just getting things done, getting it done. All right, guys, we're going to go down now. Got it. Okay. It... Whew, 
All right, guys, heading out on a night run. First night run in a while. And I have a huge jacket on because it's freezing in Denver. And I don't really have a great, great winter running coat. It's on the way, it's in the mail, it's coming, but it's not here yet. And so in the meantime, because I'm only going three miles, nice and easy, nine minute pace tonight, I don't want to be cold. I don't want to be cold. So I, I'm going to wear this guy. I know, I know. This is not what you should wear for running, but I'd rather be just a little warmer on easy runs versus freezing out there. So anyway, before I go run, I want to talk briefly about the foot log and the plantar fasciitis. It's really, based on the research I've done, it's really difficult to find one, two, three reasons, like exact precise reasons why people overcome their plantar fasciitis. It's hard. Like there's so many different ideas out there. Well, I just want to give one brief update. This is a piece of wood that is from one of my child's toys. And when plantar fasciitis flared up in the past, I was digging into my heel with this guy to attempt to break up the scar tissue that had built up in my heel, which causes some of the pain in your heel area. Well, I don't know if that was the right move. What I've done now, listening, listening to a lot of you in the comments and also just researching different physical therapists out there that have ideas on how to, how to alleviate the pain. I think what I'm leaning more toward is having a, a, a tool that is a little bigger than this, like this foot log. And instead of massaging the heel area, massaging the arch, but also, but also in addition to massaging the arch, basically stepping onto the foot log with your foot and just standing there gently make sure you're bracing yourself on a uh, on a counter or some a couch so you're not putting all of your weight onto your arch but some of it and then just slowly ease down into your arch stepping right on top of this on this foot log without rolling the foot log to stretch that fascia slowly so I've been doing that for the last 10 days every single day and guys I have, I'm having a hard time finding the pain in my heel now, just so you know. All right, I'm going to stop there. I could talk all night about it, but I just wanted to let you know this is changing the game for me. I believe, I believe this is a, a big part of it. Again, will I ever know fully? Uh, I don't know, but it seems to be working for me. And with that said, we're zipping out for three miles, nine minute pace, and yes, my first ever run in the Skechers Ultra Go. I'm not gonna give you my first impression tonight of these shoes, I'll do that tomorrow or the next day. I just, I'm tired from the cocktail party last night. I gotta go to bed soon. So I'm gonna run in these guys real quick and then come back and yes, talk about the Vimera 14s. Oh my goodness, oh my, all right, come on, come on. Okay, I have to I have to just share one thing real quick is that the toe box on these Skechers the uh it's like talk about some good ventilation through the uh, toe box like I could see in the summer them feeling really good but uh cuz you cool off your toes but right now in the winter woo I can feel the air coming through the the toe box quite a bit. That's kind of uh kind of interesting. Five days ago, this happened. Into the warm-up routine, I want to talk really briefly about something that happened today. And it connects to this whole story of today. I did not get all the shots I wanted today in the Nike Vimero 14s. And something unfortunate happened. Basically, for me, when I'm doing a warm-up, uh, a lot of times I am carrying the shoes that I'm going to do the workout in, in my hands, to the starting line. So I used to do this in college and the habit has just continued forward. Well, today I parked my car, you saw me there on the side of the road, and I wanted to do the time trial, which is gonna be a video that publishes at 3 p.m. today, if you're watching this in the morning. And essentially what happened was I ran with these turbos down to the starting line, down this creek path, and lo and behold, I somebody saw me hide my Nike Vimero 14s in the bushes. And so they're gone. 
they're gone. Somebody. That's right. They're gone. The Nike Vimera 14s, they're gone. Somebody took them. I hope you're using them. Whoever took them, I hope you're using them. No, really, guys, I uh, I wanted to put a lot of miles into those shoes for you. I was excited about them. I think it was a great update to the Vimera lineup for Nike. Like, they, they felt really nice. I had only put 10 miles into them, so, of course, I don't feel comfortable giving you a full review of the shoe until about 50 miles. But something happened a couple days ago. I got a couple emails from some fans of the vlog, Kip and Susanna, encouraging me to let you know that Kip started a GoFundMe page to get me a new pair of Nike Vimero 14s. What? That's amazing. I've never used GoFundMe. I would never ask for money for to buy running shoes. And listen, I'm on a budget. Like, I can't just go out. I know it might seem that I can buy running shoes at any time. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Uh, I buy shoes that I'm interested in and that, frankly, you are interested in. But I am on a budget. And so that's why, like, two days ago, I bought these Skechers that I'm wearing right now for $59. Like, that's a good deal. Uh, also, tomorrow... Just a side note, tomorrow, probably, I know this is crazy, but another pair of running shoes is going to show up at my front door, hopefully. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I got an incredible Cyber Monday deal out of this world. Could not pass it up. You will not believe how affordable, cheap, frankly, dirt cheap these running shoes are. Anyway, I can't go buy running shoes all the time, and therefore, I could not replace the Nike Vimero 14s with a snap of a finger. Uh, you know, they're so they're $150. I'm just going to say thank you, Kip. Thank you, Susanna, and everyone else who has actually already donated to the GoFundMe page so that I can acquire these shoes back to get you guys a full review of the Vimero 14. It's down below in the description, the link to the GoFundMe page. Now, the minimum donation, it has to be at least $5. I feel like GoFundMe should make it $1, but I guarantee you with like a snap of a finger with all of you out there, we can get to $150. It'd be amazing. I mean, I, it would be so cool to get a pair of shoes that, well, first of all, that were stolen and then to see the community, you guys, in the comments, rally around this, like, I would, I think I would frame the pair of shoes after I wore them for, like, 500 miles, because it's like, they're not, they're no longer my shoes, they're our shoes. Anyway, it's just amazing, so thank you, Kip, Susanna, everybody else, the link is down below for the GoFundMe, and, um, you better believe it, like, I, I want to run in these shoes for you on you, too. And yes, the keyword of the day is community. It's community. And I just, I, I used to say this a lot, I still say it occasionally, I wish I could shake every single person's hand who's watching these videos every day. I mean, someday, somehow, somewhere, maybe at a big marathon, I don't know, we're gonna have a meetup. I just would love to meet all of you. Like, I, I read your comments. I try to respond to them. It's, it's getting more and more difficult. But uh, I just... So anyway, that's the key word because you guys are special. And just this GoFundMe page is like just showing me that... We've got something here. We've got something. And I'm going to keep fighting. I keep commenting down below uh, to some of your comments. I, I say like, if you keep watching, I'll keep publishing. Deal? Deal? And the question of the day, it's kind of back to that 30,000 foot view type of question. I love, trust me, I love learning about your different opinions on running shoes, but I also want to get to know you as well. So it's not just about the gear, it's about our stories, and our stories impact each other, all right? And you got your stories down in the comments inspire me every day, and, and I know for a fact that other people are reading them as well, it's not just me. So here we go. Question of the day, what is one signpost, I'll explain, but what is one signpost in your running experience, running career, that made you make an important decision? Let me, let me give you mine. Four years, so after college, graduated in 09, from 09 to frankly about 2015, I was very much like a recreation, like I was, I was barely running, maybe twice a week. I, I, I took a lot of time off. I just needed a break. And then the signpost in my life was when my brother, Joseph, invited me back into basically to explore ultra running and mountain running and trail running. 
And if my brother hadn't made that invitation to rediscover running through the trails and through the mountains, I'm not sure I'd be talking to you right now. I mean, re truly. So he made that invitation to me like four years ago in preparation for this huge mountain adventure that we did, a running adventure. Anyway, that was a big signpost in my life and I'm curious to hear what yours is down in the comments. And that's it folks, thanks for being here. And as I already said, if you keep watching, I'll keep uploading. Deal? Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Mm, 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 mm. Let's do this.